Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics. And today, in this video, we are going to be starting to get ourselves familiarized with the Kawasaki's Teachpad. That is a, a Kawasaki's Teachpad is a very uh, integral part of controlling and running your robot. It does a lot within this Teachpad, so there's a lot for us to learn. And first things what we're going to do, we're going to need to understand what all these buttons mean and we go through all the menus. I do not know how many videos it's going to take to make this uh, fully explainable as much as I can. So if you see a hashtag one, which means there is a follow up video later on for you to continue watching. So because there's a lot to explain, a lot to run through it, because there's huge amounts of uh, um, uh, things that you can do with it. And uh, yeah, it's a lot to explain. So uh, uh, if you didn't watch the last video, in the last video we uh, looked through all the wiring and uh, uh, powering up, and, and not we really, actually didn't power up. We just run through all the wiring and all the bits that we used to know to get ourselves uh, set up for this robot to be start to be operated from this teachpad. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, so I have my uh, beautiful pencil in here. I know the visibility of the screen is not that very good due to lighting, but hopefully you guys can see just enough what needs to be uh, seen. So from the get go, uh, we have a uh, switch that switches between manual mode and repeat mode. Basically, when you go into repeat mode, if uh, there is another switch that needs to be uh, activated onto a uh, controller, that will change that into green. I'll show that now. So if the key on the controller has been switched to a repeat and a switch here has been switched to repeat, this whole section in here you can see hopefully on the screen will turn green telling you that you are in repeat mode and pretty much ready to start operate in repeat mode. So let me turn that off. As you can see now that I turned it off to manual mode it does not change. The green still stays in the repeat because the controller is still on into repeat and you won't be able to do any manual moves unless the uh, repeat uh, switch, the switch from the controller is being turned on to a manual. Alright, now that we know that, we are understood, understood this part. So this one in here is obviously self-explanatory, it is the e-stop. So, and uh, another thing we need to have a look at here on the back, there is a switch right here. So this switch with uh, Kawasaki, and I think most of the robots are calling it a dead man switch. So basically when you are in this mode, which is uh, the teach mode, uh, you are able to activate by switching this on and by activating the motor in here. We're going to get to that in a minute. You are able to start using these buttons in here, which will manually move the axis. And uh, so basically, yeah, to explain that man switch in here, the one you've been using for teaching of the positions manually. So the next up is uh, this area, what uh, Kawasaki calls operational screen. These are called all hardware keys. So next up, we need to go through and start understanding what most of these keys are. So uh, as you can see, there's an A key from two sides. So, if, so both of them do, does, the, does the same thing. So, and also you can see in here, a lot of these switches, they've got the blue signs on them. So every time the A is clicked, it will activate whatever is in the blue uh, writing in here. When it's received, uh, released, it will activate whatever is in a white area. So, 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 so sevens and nines and uh, eights will be activated just like that by clicking that. And if you activate the A and the speed, it will uh, activate and specifically go to the area of the speed. We're going to get to that in the minute as well. So the first, so uh, in the Kawasaki world, the A, A switch, A, A, A is used with the other keys. The function on the upper part of the key is enabled when it is pressed within this A key. So pretty much self-explanatory, A key activates anything that is in the upper part of the button. Then there is a menu key. When you click on the menu key, it will open a small menu here on the side where you can go and start going uh, accessing some of the uh, internal areas in the screen. We're going to get to that in a minute once we go through the buttons. So then we have an R button in here. R button is a return. Or if you click, if, if, let's say you are into the 
into the screen and you click uh, nothing is being activated on the screen itself and you click R as you can see in here it says input the desired R code in uh, Kawasaki R code is pretty much like a area code within like a menu number let's say if I type in a uh, menu number one I remember 507 so it will take you to that specific menu uh, directly without you going through the uh, through the menu in here via the aux we're gonna get to that in a minute so you can you can you can have a direct numbers that will take you directly to the menu that you are after by entering number in here uh, next up we have enter which is self expansion and then you want to accept you're just gonna click enter and also there is a very neat little trick if you click R and then take A plus help it will open the whole menu with all the codes that are associated for specific areas of what you're trying to access so they're all in here so by clicking that it will take me straight to that window so uh, by returning again remember you need to be in the R mode A help and you will receive the list of all the menus and R codes for that specific menus so next we are going to check out is uh, these uh, up and down, left and right and uh, cursor arrows. So these pretty much is self-explanatory, they move up and down, it's like you can see, it just moves up and down. And uh, left and right, if you can see right in the, in, in the toolbar in here, moves left and right in here, and obviously all throughout the menu. But they also work as an extra key for you, as you can see, if I move up and down, the, there is a specific area in here, as you can see, at the moment, my, my attention has been located on step 5. So, but if I move cursor up and down, I, uh, the step, that step does not move with it. So, to fix that, all you need to do is click A, and it will start moving with you. So, you are able to, this way, go to the specific step that you want to edit. So that is a very nice unique feature that I actually recently found out because previously I was doing uh, differently because you can see in here you have step button in here. Uh, let's just run this up, step button in here. And by clicking step button, you can literally say, let's say step 12 and click and enter, it will take you to that step 12. But this is another cool feature that I recently found out it works really, really well. So the next one is uh, this button in here is actually called a fast check function and it's something that needs to be enabled or uh, or done with it which are, we are going to be looking into this but i have not used this button yet but we are definitely going to be checking that out in uh, the future videos and see how that works so basically this is called a fast check function button so uh we'll find out in the future what that does uh, after that we have this go up uh, go and back button so pretty much these are when you are what they call a um uh, check mode you are able to uh, hold your uh, dead man switch and move between uh, check the positions so you can go forward and then you can go back you can go to the specific specific position and go back we're going to be checking those buttons in the future videos for us to fully understand how they really function so next up let's have a look at, at this teach speed button so you can see in here manual speed in this window so like a window in this uh, manual speed so you can see I can click it here into a by by uh, touching the screen and it changes to one, two, three, and four, five. So basically, this is the manual speed when you are into teach mode and operating your uh, joints manually. You can select this speed as at what speed the joints or whatever you're trying to do is moving manually. So and also this button does the same thing, and that is the teach speed button. So from there on, we can have a look at a uh, this a step button, which I already I explained it by uh, we're clicking the step button, selecting a step, entering. It will take you to the specific step that you want to work with, and you can edit it and do whatever you want to do. The next step is let's check out this button in here, which is uh, in uh, there's a white section, which is like a little arrows, and there's an interpret. So uh, for, uh, when when you're clicking without uh, selecting A, it basically changes between operation modes. But uh, you can quickly navigate through it to see which operation you are trying to work with. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get to those in the future videos, but at the moment that's pretty much what that does. You can do that as well by clicking the screen.
Also, if you are uh, uh, selecting a uh, A button and then uh, interp will, start, uh, will get activated. And that here will change between interpolated modes. So you can see in this window in here it will be joint, linear, circular 1, circular 2 and back to join. Just a quick access to change these interpolated motion mode. This button in here, external axis, it's, it's self-explanatory, is for external axis operations. We are possibly going to look at that in the future, but at the moment I'm not going to bother with that. Alright guys, we are going to be a finishing with uh, this button for this video and I will see you guys in the next one. We will continue down the line to understand more about these buttons. So see you in the next one.